everyone in the audience right now, you are witnessing us about to post a video that we've worked on a fucking ton over the last week. And I, I believe, I believe this has a ceiling of virality within the football space. I'm gonna be honest with you because I like you. If I give you my best player, I'm gonna need at least a first rounder in return. At least a first. I can't make that same mistake twice. <laughs> you know, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't make that mistake. I'm excited. I, I send it to a lot of people for posting it. And uh, the majority of people had very good feedback from it. And these are people that I trust and I, I trust their humor with it. So I, I'm a little nervous to post it, to be honest. Yeah, well, because it's one of those things where it's like we've been working on it, working on it. And now it's like it's time. Now the market tells us whether or not we're fucking yeah. funny or we're fucking right. <laughs> All right. All right. We're nine days out from the first ever virtual NFL draft. I think we're all in agreement that nothing will go wrong. Yeah. Fuck it. I'm done. Yeah, I don't know. My, my original plan was to do it on Thursday and have it just be like a week away, dot, dot, dot. But it makes, yeah, yeah, I guess that we could always do like nine days away. Yeah. Fuck, maybe I like that better. I don't want to wait until Thursday to put it out, but I kind of like that tweet a little better. Yeah, I mean, just like the, the short, simple, like, doom, and then, like, the video kicks in, and that's it. Fuck it. I just uh, hit tweet on it. <laughs> <laughs> All that. <laughs> All right, it's posted. It looks fucking crispy on Twitter. Snacks off Twitter. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No sorry. peeking. <laughs> sorry. All right, it's I, up. I don't even have my phone. This is bullshit. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to look at it. Oh, I got to get my I notes. I, I, I'd, rather, I'd rather get more excited. Same. Snacks, my man. I miss you. I miss you Dude, too. Dude, I was pal. about to say, I, I know that I'm going into like deep depression <laughs> and quarantine because I miss you guys a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's I just want to like see you guys like walk in or like us walk into the studio, like just two minutes later. What's cracking big? The energy today. <laughs> what? You just know how to start the show, don't you? <laughs> I said I said bring in the energy today, right? As you started. I didn't mean to do that. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to roll for this episode. I'm feeling a good one out of us. We haven't had, I a, know. We haven't had a killer ep in a, in a little while because last time Animal showed up to the field high and we, it was tough to get through. I like how, wait, hold on. Did, so you still haven't admitted it. You're still against, you're still against that notion. Didn't, I swear. I was really just excited about it. If I was high, I would have told you guys. Like, I'll, I say it all the time. I smoked right after that, probably like an hour later. But like, I was really excited about that pancake, excited about the episode. And just, I was giddy. You know, I got like a little schoolgirl. Okay. Well, no one in the comment section believed. No one in our audience believed. Nobody no. did. And the number I, of like different I, drugs I people them. thought you were on were, were uh, felt like we were at a fucking festival. Coachella was canceled, Full but Animal had his own fucking Coachella downstairs in the dump. Full disclosure, this is a rum and coke. So, you know. Okay. So, so that's your excuse for all the bad picks you're going to make, regardless yes. of what's not the alcohol was so there. So midway through the episode when you're, when you're, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> By nothing. When you transform into being high again somehow. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I hope y'all are as giddy as Animal was last week and as we are today because I don't think that's how that works if you're trying to, like, give a fake blowjob. Ah, oh, shit, that's not how it works. What's the, the movie? It's a trifecta, oh. so it's like a triangle. You're getting Sarah Marshall? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> but you'd need another person in your video. I, I, I've been thinking yeah. about that since last week, and it just it didn't work. Oh, you've been thinking about doing it? <laughs> you fucking idiot. All right, all right, all right. Today, 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 we are less than a week away from the actual NFL draft. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. This might be the highest rated sporting event on television in, oh, yeah. in history because... Yeah. Wait, doesn't the uh, Jordan documentary come out? When's that come out? I think it's this Very Sunday. soon. What time is it? Game time. My mentality was to go out and win at any cost. Jordan is the most talented player in the NBA by far. Very soon. Week, so we yeah. got the Jordan documentary, and then we got the NFL draft. But since the NFL draft is coming up, we want to hit you with a little more rookie dynasty content. I know my boys, Mike and Noah, have been killing it over at BBB. Bunk bed breakdowns. Go support the brand. Merch link in the description in the comment section. But we want to give y'all our point of view over here. Snacks and Animal have something to fucking say. Listen, listen, they're ballers yeah. too. They, they dabble in yeah. Dynasty. They are Dynasty dabblers. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to do a first round rookie mock draft. 
But we are going to look at a real mock draft that was done by draftsite.com. So we took a mock draft that someone did, and we are going to be basing this first round rookie mock draft, Dynasty Fantasy Football mock draft, on that mock draft. So someone out there on the interweb put out a mock draft, and we're going to pretend like that was the real NFL draft, and we're going to draft our fantasy teams based on that. That link, if you want to follow along and look at the picks we're uh, talking about, will also be at the top of the comment section. It'll be pinned there, and it will be one of the first links in the description. So if you want to check out the mock draft that we used in that, go click it. You can follow along, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, are, y'all, are y'all ready? What's cracking, big dog? Scott. Scott, intro. Oh, now you're telling him? Okay, so here's how we're going to do this. We are going to do a 12-teamer. We're going to do a snake draft. Snacks is going to take the 101. I will be the 102. Animal will be the 103. And then Animal will also be the 104. And we'll keep doing it like that and like that and like that. Y'all know what a fucking snake draft is. Y'all play fantasy football on the regular. This will be a one-quarterback draft. But we will go back afterwards once we finish the 12 teams and – we will talk about if it were super flex because the leagues that we play in are super flex, where would we have taken the guys like Burrow and Tua based on the NFL draft that we are using the mock of. Um, so for now it's going to be one quarterback and we're going to go based off of that without further ado, Mr. Snackless, Nicholas snacks. You are my last name. Well, Scott can edit there that out. Know. Depending no, on keep, keep it in there. Depending on whether or not Scott wants you killed, he can edit it out. If uh, if he wants, if he wishes Corona upon you, keep it in. You are on the clock, one oh one. All right. So uh, I was gonna take him no matter who I saw drafted him, and I actually said some bullshit about him a few weeks back, and I was completely in the wrong. Only good, <laughs> only good people that are smart and intelligent admit when they're wrong, and that's exactly what I did. And I'm taking Jonathan Taylor at the 101. Uh, he was drafted to Indianapolis in the second round, which, I mean, that's pretty, pretty solid, solid landing spot. And it's, uh, it's just a token of where the NFL is going. And in this mock, the running back is going first in the second round. Crazy. To me, he's, he's RB1 in this class. The Colts have a very strong offensive line. Their quarterback situation is really fluid with Phillip Rivers coming in for, for a stopgap one year. I think they rely heavily on the run moving forward and people might point to like Marlon Mack, but if they're bringing in Jonathan Taylor, I think Taylor's skill level is way above Max and Mack is a free agent after this year. So that's really not concerning to me in a dynasty league. We saw what he did in college three years. He was, you know, his whole college career, he was absolutely phenomenal breakaway speed. He's got everything you want, elusiveness, power, um, he's the whole deal. And for me, if I could lock in a guy at the one one in a really good offensive scheme behind a great offensive line, who, you know, is probably going to be a top 10 fantasy back year in and year out. I sign it in blood with my cock, Jonathan Taylor. <laughs> okay. So he goes JT one Oh one Taylor goes to Indy. It's an interesting landing spot because what's going to happen is a lot of these top backs, a lot of these top backs are going to end up in places where it's a good outlook for Dynasty, not so much for redraft, because they're going to go places where, like, a Marlon Mack is there. Now, Taylor's going to get drafted, and it's not like Mack's going to get completely phased out of the offense, right? Like, Mack yeah, will can't. still probably get, you know, even if he gets 120, 130, 140 touches, Naeem Hines will mix in there for, like, 60 or 70 touches probably. But Taylor should be the guy between, you know, weeks four and week six, he should kind of take over and, and start running that backfield. It's pretty good draft capital. Like you said, I mean, early second rounder. So yeah. And, and you're looking long, in dynasty. It's long-term thing. Max is an unrestricted free agent after this year. And there's a 0% chance if they're taking Taylor that they resign max. So it's his backfield moving forward. So I have no qualms with the landing spot and I I'm still taking my RB one at the one spot. Yeah. And you throw that guy behind that fucking Indianapolis offensive line. He's, he's going to eat. He's going to eat. Five years. That's all you need. If he's done after five right. years, you, you had a great run. But yeah. I love it for, for Jonathan Taylor. I would hate that for Marlon Mack, though. Being well, yeah, of course, of course, of course. Really? Oh, I saw that. I was so pissed. <laughs> That's it. That's all I have to say. I <laughs> love that. All right. At the 102, I will be taking my overall top rank running back in rookie drafts. 
as well as the number one rookie running back taken in this draft. According to the mock draft, DeAndre Swift was the first running back off the board, went to Miami, pick 26 overall. Now, they got a couple uh, picks in the first round. He goes first. He, he's the first running back off the board. And what that tells that that what that tells me, damn, I want to go to a tweet right now that I put up, but I promise that no, I you wouldn't. Cannot. No, you cannot. No, you cannot. I'll remember it off sir. the top of my head. And I tweeted this out talking about why I like Swift because I put it out on Twitter and it was kind of <laughs> controversial. People were like, no, you can't pick Swift over Taylor. I'm like, I think people are really underestimating just how good of a back DeAndre Swift is. And if he gets the, the draft capital ahead of Taylor, that's going to guarantee a workload floor that's that might be bigger than Taylor's and might be better going forward and he's going to be much more involved in the passing game and I was looking at all of the first running backs off the board over the last like nine years so if we go to the NFL draft who's it who's the first running back that came off the board and if you look at the ones that went in the if you look at the ones that went in in the first round all of them basically every single one except for Mark Ingram like eight years ago who was like the 29th pick so he was the latest pick in the first round of the running backs all of them averaged around 19 to 24 touches per game in their rookie season the only one that was the lowest of those guys besides Ingram was Gurley at like 19 and a half he was coming off that ACL injury from Georgia so like if you're the first running back off the board and you're a first round pick you're you're pretty much guaranteed a floor of 18 to 20 touches rookie year and Swift is a phenomenal pass catcher they do bring in Jordan Howard which almost identical to Mac hurts his ceiling or floor a little bit because the touches will be altered a little bit there in the backfield but like you know damn well that Swift is taking all of the passing work in that backfield I think later on in this in this mock draft they took AJ Dillon too who makes Jordan Howard redundant and I I don't know why they would fucking take him after they signed Jordan Howard but regardless all of that passing work is Swift I could see Swift coming in and catching 50 to 60 passes right off the rip even if he gets 180 190 200 uh, carries that's really valuable touches, and he's going he's gonna to eat in this offense. I just think he's one of the most talented running backs that we've seen. He reminds me a lot of uh, Dalvin Cook, the way he's got that fucking mm-hmm. stanky leg. He can contribute on all three downs. He's good in the, in the passing game. Like I don't know. I love Swift, and I love the draft capital here. So if this happens, which I think is a real possibility. It seems like a very ideal landing spot. Yeah, I, I, would, I would be really surprised if Miami doesn't come away from round one with either DeAndre Swift or – J.K. Dobbins. Now, a lot of people might like Taylor as a top prospect. I think as a pure running back, he's probably the best one of, of the group. But the fact that they went out inside and Jordan Howard tells you that they're probably, if they're going to draft someone, they're going to draft a compliment, if anything, to Jordan Howard, right? They're going to draft someone that can contribute on the other downs that Howard can't. So it doesn't really make sense to sign Howard and then draft Taylor. So love Swift. Yep. I think the workload is beautiful. And I just, I just think he's a great running back. I think Jonathan Taylor's got to the point where he's like so iconic that we just think that these other running backs are like not really that good anymore. But he has like elite That's fantasy awesome. upside. So I love Swift 102. Mark that the fuck down. Nice. I can't disagree with you there. I'm going to go ahead and take C.D. Lamb at the 103. And in this uh, mark draft, he went to the Raiders at the 12 spot. So the Raiders have needed a number one wide receiver since Amari Cooper, since they traded him not away. True. So I think this is a – what do you mean not true? Why are you going to interrupt me right away? Right I'm away. Love I'm, it. I'm one, I'm one sentence in. This is not a fucking script. This is a podcast, Animal. Yeah, I let everyone else talk. Then don't. If well, you're going to complain about it, the rebuttal points. I was about to tell you, Hunter Renfro was on the team last year. <laughs> He's not the number one. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> Animal, don't get mad. Get better. Let's go. All right. So, Raiders have needed a number one wide receiver since Amari Cooper's departure. That's a fact. CD Lamb is, a, is the perfect fit. Broke out at 19, so we know that he's capable of filling that role as an NFL wide receiver. Nick, what's with the crazy eyes, my man? You know what Overall I was just skills. I was just thinking I was just thinking that like whenever we do these videos someone always like screenshots shit that we do in the middle of it and I was just giving <laughs> them something to screenshot there for some That's reason a moment for them yeah keep, all right keep rolling so the, the 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 yeah you guys got me all fucked up the big <laughs> thing I really like about C D Lamb is motherfuckers all right so Amari Cooper was an eighty reception guy right now you have Tyrell Williams there who's not the answer he's a sixty reception guy he doesn't ever get more than 65, 67 receptions a year. And that's not going to cut it for a wide receiver one. C.D. Lamb will be that guy. College dominator over 35%. Overall wide, res- overall wide receiver skills are all A1. They're steak sauce. They're fucking – Love that. You know, C.D. steak sauce lamb. Hands. C.D. put some steak sauce on the fucking lamb. Uh-huh. Let's go. Elite hands and ball tracking. And this was the stat that I uh, stole from the Big Dogs draft guide per PFF. So it's actually from PFF. We're just – it's like, the, it's like the office where he quotes Wayne Gretzky and then quotes himself. Yeah. Animals he like triple quoting here. 26 tackles on 62 catches, which is a 0.42 t- 
tackles broken per, per reception, which is just ridiculous. So, like, people worry about, like, you know, size of guys. Like, this guy's breaking tackles. He's 6'2". He's a big guy. He's fast. Four five forty. So, like, for a wide receiver, that's, that's perfect for me. I think he's just a perfect wide receiver one for what John Gruden and the Raiders want to do. So, I'm all in on CeeDee Lamb at that spot. It's interesting because you hear a lot of people in the industry, like, just ripping off the top four or five running backs, you know, like no questions asked. Like we love CD lamb, but he's like the number six overall, you know, player in most fantasy first round mocks. But CD lamb to me is by far and away the most talented uh, wide receiver in this class. And if he goes, where'd he go? 12 overall. 12 overall yeah. to the Raiders. Yeah. 12 overall to the Raiders. Yeah. I like that fit too, because Gruden is a guy like say what you want about Gruden about his coaching or whatever the fuck he wants. I think he's done a good job in Oakland so far. Like yeah. he's always done a good job also producing fantasy wide receivers. Mm-hmm. And this should be no different with, with CD lamb for, So for dynasty, you have to love his long-term. You have to love his, like his long-term outlook. I don't know how great it'll be in, in terms of uh, first year stuff, because they do have some weapons yeah. there. And Renfro he's a, he's a wide and, receiver though. So you know that you're going to have to wait a little bit possibly. Yeah, for Not sure. Like but running backs that are just plug and play. I don't, I don't hate the uh, CD Lamb pick. I would say, you know, you will run into the 104 here, but just the fact that we had some other running backs land in really good spots too, I might dabble with those over, uh, over CD here. But I mean, I don't think you can argue with anyone taking CD anywhere inside the top five. Yeah, I just like where he fell really uh, at the Raiders. I think they really need that position. They, like you said, they have other weapons that they're, 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 cra- they're definitely craving an outside weapon. So yeah, yeah, they're set at tight end. They're set at running back. They have their your slot guy. So I mean, this is a perfect fit. All right, the 104. I also have, and this one I did go with the running back. I went with J.K. Dobbins, who went to Tampa Bay in the 45th overall pick. Now one pick behind Jay, Jay Taylor. Yes. Right behind this, him. Uh, this one, I actually, like, I love this fit so much because Tampa Bay, they don't have, like, a real set running back right now. They got Ronald Jones there, and, like, I don't even know. They got, like, six running backs. They all suck. So, like, it's, they're all irrelevant. If you bring in a guy like J.K. Dobbins, you know he's going to get work right away, especially with a guy like Tom Brady who loves to check down to running backs. And J.K. Dobbins is a natural pass catcher. He had 360-yard touchdown runs in 2019. and seven touchdown runs that were 25 plus yards or more. So like he's got the breakaway speed. Explosive. Yeah. And there's just like, it's the Tom Brady factor for me. I know this is dynasty and Tom Brady's probably not going to be around for, you know, maybe two, you got two years probably. But I think with running backs, if you can get two elite years out of a guy, I mean, that's, that's pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. The way running I also don't think he's going to completely fall off a cliff when Brady retires either. Yeah, I think Dobbins is good enough. I, I think he's, Dobbins he's is good enough to sustain a future, it. Great future first contract run. Mm-hmm. I mean, you yeah, think the, about what they did the, with like Doug Martin. They kept him around for fucking forever. Yeah, and he was yeah the big thing I like with Dobbins was is the receiving numbers were, were consistent. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and, and he's they, one of the best athletes. They went up. Yeah, he's one of the best athletes in the class. Like he can he can come in and be their fucking early down runner, their goal line runner. Um contribute on third down so I, I love jk Dobbins to tampa bay would be beautiful any any of these top running backs going to tampa bay would be great i think it pretty much makes ronald jones redundant and they don't have like you could say dare ogumbuale whatever the fuck his name is is like their pass yeah. catcher but he's only their pass catcher because they don't have anyone else that can catch passes exactly he's, if you bring in a guy like jk Dobbins, he's gonna catch the passes there i mean and this offense yeah, is gonna be ten, average 10.7 yards of reception yeah, I mean, he's explosive. He's a big-time playmaker. I wish he tested he at the combine. touch so he... count every single year, which is something else that is, is actually – I like that because that shows that he's NFL ready. Yeah, I mean, he can get in the end zone. He could be the goal line guy. I, I was a little uh, disappointed when he weighed in at, like, 209 pounds. I thought he was going to weigh in a little bit more, like, workhorse level-ish. And then he didn't, he didn't run or, or really compete in the combine. So yeah, it made me a little bit, Yeah, it made me a little bit weary about, like, you know, what his athleticism really was. But they go we – have, we have numbers going back to, like, Ohio State – well, Ohio that's also, State. I didn't even mention that. That was my first point. Like, he, Ohio State, like they churn out running backs. Yeah. So, like, that's something that I, you know, schools play a little bit apart for me. You know, if there's a history, like, you know, when it comes to like tackles and stuff like that, there's O line university, all that tight end school, you know, like oh, Iowa tight ends. Stuff like that matters a little bit. It matters. Everything matters. Blue lives matter, animal. Running back that's lives matter. Well, that was good analysis. Thanks, buddy. Snacks, it's your turn. Appreciate it. No, it's my, it's not, my it's turn. Not, it's not your turn. My Are you turn. fucking high? <laughs> no, I just... I, I Is this going to be a recurring you, theme? I forgot you had the 101. No, he's definitely not high right now, but but looking Shit. at how... Look at him being not high right now. 
makes me absolute certain that he was high last week. A hundred percent. No fucking question. There's no, there's no way around it. First of all, if you weren't high, I'm almost concerned. No person yeah, can act yes. like that. I, I was, I was having a good time. I can't have a good time. I, I have a great, when I'm not high or drunk and I have a great time, I don't sound like the way you sounded. Listen, I was just excited. Okay. Okay, animal. I will believe you. I 105. Don't. I'm stop. I'm on the clock. <laughs> I am on the clock. And my Atlanta Falcons are in a world of hurt when it comes to our backfield. Thus, we have we enough. We have selected Cam Akers in the third round with the 78th overall pick. Now, I love Cam Akers as a prospect. This kid is fucking dynamite. 217 pounds, got the workhorse size, sub 4, 5, 40, got the breakaway, legit size, speed combo. His feet move fucking whatever animal speed moves at. He's the anti-animal from last week. He's, his feet are an, at an unbelievable pace when he shows off his agility on the field. The fact that he racked up over 1,100 rushing yards last year behind Florida State, which was one of the absolute worst offensive lines in all of the entire college football was a, a detriment to fucking everything that they've ever built up there. And that's why they got rid of like everyone that worked there after the season. Cam Akers is finally out of that situation and can become the back that we all know him to be in Atlanta, where they just signed Todd Gurley one year, $5 million. When you sign a running back, who's 25 years old to a one year, $5 million contract, what kind of confidence, what, what kind of confidence does that tell you about it? Especially the ilk of Gurley's resume. So there is, probably zero confidence in that contract yeah like the, i don't know it's what like peyton, i don't know what peyton barber got but like i'm sure it's like two million less dollars than whatever todd Gurley got so peyton barber is like the fourth string of washington probably got a similar deal to what todd Gurley got and clearly there's already reports coming out that they're not going to be leaning on Gurley uh to be a workhorse there they're going to be he's going to be in the rotation so Gurley's out in one year he's going to fucking they're going to run him into the ground if they can if not he'll probably survive on like 12 touches a game Cam makers will split that backfield and then be a fucking workhorse for this Falcons offense by uh, hopefully next year Dirk Cutter won't be there anymore so this offense might actually have a scheme in which we can have a successful ground game but either way Akers is phenomenal in the passing game as well he's, a, he's just a very natural athlete he goes to a spot where he can be a three down workhorse where there's not a lot of spots in the NFL uh, where that opportunity kind of avails itself. So Cam Akers going to the Falcons is just fucking orgasmic. And I will gladly take him at the 105 here to uh, plug in as a, as a RB2 with RB1 long term upside. The fuck you think about that animal? It's fucking sick, dude. Fuck, 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 fuck. Fucking sick, dude. I like it. But you didn't ask me, so I'm not going to. I'm probably maybe I shouldn't respond. I mean, wh- what's it? Wh- what's it to me? I actually think it's a great pick, and I would love it in the, in the second round. Is that where he was in the second round? They took him. He went 78th overall, so that'd be third round. Third round. Oh my god! Where do you, you sign up with blood in your cock for that? No, as oh, a Fal- as a Falcon fan, not even just a a fantasy football owner. Yeah, right? no, I, is that I a love fucking that. saying? What is that a saying? What but sign it with you sign it with your cock and blood or something? What are you yeah. blood, blood first? Is that real? It's real as of like 15 minutes ago. Yeah, it's real as if, did you like? It's real as in like snacks would actually fucking do that. Like, have <laughs> you done that? that? If there's <laughs> like, some, yeah. if there's something I want, something when I you need, wait when you send to, your yeah. letters to like John Mara, do you sign it with <laughs> blood on your cock? This is a Signed true story. This is a very true story. This is a very and true story, cock. and I think this is why I have not received the reply since the last one, the last letter I sent. I think it was. I think it was right after week 17 when I was, I was, I, you know, I was all in emotional. I pricked my thumb and I, I put it where I sign it at the, at the bottom. I remember you telling me that and you were like, don't tell anyone I did that. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. That shit was funny. Yeah. You're sick. Yeah. Fucking, uh, I'm, I'm, we're really probably close to seeing a cock signing from you. It's, it's can't, I can't wait. It's getting there. You know, it's a real deal. Something happening when, when that, when the, when the cock comes out, but anyway, I have the 106, probably not my most favorite landing spot, but uh, Jerry Judy to the uh, 106 to the Jets. I would like, I don't want to interrupt, but I, I do want to interrupt. I want to preface this pick by saying I understand Cam Akers went off the board in the third round in the NFL draft in this mock draft, the one we're using. And there was a lot of wide receivers that went off the board in the first round. And a lot of them. You can make the argument that you could take one of those guys over Cam Akers for the draft capital. 
but I just like the production you're going to get out of Cam Akers in year one and year two right off the rip. If Jerry Judy basically went fucking anywhere besides the Jets, I would have probably taken him over Cam Akers here because he was a top 12 or whatever pick he was. So if you went to like the fucking Eagles or you went to any of those other teams, I would have been in on, on Judy here because I love him as a prospect. But that's the reason why I went Akers over Judy because Judy ended up in the color that is residing behind Animal, unless he's yes. in like a donut shop or something, wherever you guys, <laughs> wherever you guys want to put him Fuck knows. Could be a could be a, a weed dispensary, but um, that was a good one, right, Animal? But yeah, I'm taking Jerry Judy, and Hilarious. it's uh, I, I love the prospect. The talent is unbelievable. We saw what he did. What his sophomore year, just completely. What everybody deemed him like the next big thing, the generational wide receiver. So we know we know the talents there. He had a dip off last year, but a lot of that is due to the, the receivers on that team are um were unbelievable it was, it was this year. Ridiculous. Yeah. There were so and many quarterback so many guys got hurt. the ball. I was just gonna say Tua got hurt. You know, more of a down year, but you we know what talents there. So he's wide receiver two in this class, and he's really not far behind Lamb. Literally, they're neck and neck to me. The Jets don't have a clear cut number one wide receiver. Rashad Perriman's a nice player. He's not their future at the position. Robbie Anderson leaves. He's, he had 96 targets from Sam Donald. I, there's plenty of concerns with Jerry Judy. And I wrote him down, and Adam Gase is toxic to any offense in the NFL right off the rip. I was thinking about this. They play six games in their division, right? Two against each team. The cornerbacks on their team, Stephen Gilmore, Jadavius White, and Byron Jones now at Miami. That is a difficult slate to go against your number one wide receiver. Yeah. But – all those concerns aside, and I'm, I'm taking the talent here. Jerry Judy's a guy I don't want to miss out on. If I have those concerns, and I do, I'm not, I don't want to skip out on him from three years down the line where he could be an all-world player with the Jets having a new offensive scheme and a better offensive line for, to give Sam Donald time to, to throw the ball. I, I would say maybe he didn't test out as, as great um, in the offseason in, in the combine, but 4-4-5, four, four, in the 40, we know his athleticism. His route running is off the charts. Have we seen this good route running since who? He reminds me of like a Cooper-ish when it comes to that. Like very, very like it's you know, crispy routes. It's just, just iconic, yeah. It's with smooth that and it's like you. It's a, it's a piece of art. It's Vincent Van Gogh after his ears chopped off painting a picture <laughs> of something that's so special. And it's and it's Jerry Judy running an NFL, well, I guess a receiving route. So I'm taking the talent there. I am very concerned about the situation, but I'm not passing up on how good Jerry Judy is. So I will take my stab with him, and I'll get my wide receiver one or two at the 106. Run it back. Yes, run it back. Can I pause? Yeah, go quick? again, bitch. Can I pause real quick? No. Two seconds. No. A few moments later. All right, back on the clock, 107. I am taking Jalen Rager. And he went, I believe it's 30, 29 to the – Green Bay Packers. And uh, when we were doing the mock draft in our text this afternoon, I was like, I was debating between somebody else, and I think he actually goes next pick. But I don't think I could love this situation anymore. Green Bay's wide receivers outside of Devontae Adams is dog shit. I, I think we can probably quantify that, right? Last year, they, with the hot names, I think we were on MVS, and he was an absolute bum. Yeah. Um, Jalen Rager is a very talented receiver, despite any stats that you'll see from his production at TCU, he was – listen, BDG, Dynasty, Fantasy Draft Guide, get on it. The lack of production – I'm going to quote it right here. The lack of production is not a detriment on him. He saw a catchable target rate uh, just 61.4% of the time, which ranks 118th among 120 wideouts to see at least 80 targets. Their offense was complete dog shit. Right, he was, ever- he's like the wide receiver version of Akers, where he's just – Despite everything fucking traffic, oncoming traffic, everything his way, he's just so fucking talented that he was able to produce at a high level. Which is it's baffling. It's almost like a DeAndre Hopkins when he's getting the ball thrown to him by TJ Yates. He's so talented, and the quarterback in the system is so bad, he's still producing. That's what Rager was doing in a god-awful situation in TCU. I love, I love the compliment to Adams. I love the speed, the vertical field, down the field for, for Aaron Rodgers. I know we've talked about in the past that they've probably gone more towards a running – oriented style of play but last year they really had nothing with Adams being hurt they had a, a corpse of Jimmy Graham at tight end they really had no weapons on the outside plugging in a Rager there I think the I think the upside and the potential for him opposite of Devontae Adams is is through the roof so I am happily taking him 107 right after Jerry Judy yeah I, I like that pick I think this next pick was was another tough one I know you kind of debated with this is where like we're getting into big time wide receiver territory because you'll see those big four guys Taylor Swift Dobbins Akers go off the board and we had 
we had uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire drop to uh, where did he go? Ja- Jacksonville. No, he went. This is because I, no, I might have picked was, him here, but he went to Cincinnati. Yeah, that's why. Okay. We didn't, the landing right. spot. The landing spot there is why would I even want to dabble in that? Yeah, he went to Cincinnati in this landing spot. It's just so, one of those guys. Now he's all of a sudden a second rounder, probably where he probably would have maybe taken him late first. Right, and and that's that's the thing with this mock draft because we're going based. on How can you landing. even take him? Like that's that that is like yeah. an awful landing spot. How can yeah, you? We're basically like, drafting Gio Bernard for the next two years. Yeah, right. like you don't. You don't so, you, there's no visible path for him and his volume right there off the rip with, with Mixon or even in the future because Mixon's, Mixon's no bum. It's not like Jonathan Taylor going in to replace a Marlon Mack. Joe Mixon's a very good running back. Um, so yeah. that, was, that was a brutal landing spot, and that just took me anyway, anywhere away from him. Yeah, dude, it, it, that's an ugly landing spot. So that is why Clyde Oetrelaire is not on this uh, list or so far he's not on the list at least. So again, guys, like if you want to uh, go check out the draft that we're using, make sure you go click the link so it gives you a little bit more context behind the analysis that we are giving y'all. Now with the 107, or is it the 108? 108. 108. Yeah. The Eagles select Justin Jefferson 21st overall. So Jefferson gets that draft capital that we're all expecting him to get. Jefferson was a part of, you know, that Clyde Edwards Hilaire offense at LSU where Joe Burrow absolutely balled out. Justin Jefferson balled out. Mar Chase is going to be probably the one on one in most rookie dynasty drafts next year as one of the best wide receiver prospects we've seen in years and years and years. He is an absolute fucking baller. So we had just studs at every position on that offensive field. Jefferson actually broke out the year prior, though. A lot of people might not know that. So you could say it's a product of the system. And I th- it, this is going to be a really interesting case study overall to see how this LSU offense like pans out in a few years. Like, you know, is Joe Burrow the truth or are these weapons just so fucking good that though they made him, you know? But I think with Justin Jefferson, man, he fits here in this Eagles offense who who, who so fucking badly need playmakers because right now they are holding on by strings when it comes to the wide receivers. By the end of the year, you didn't even know the guys that were lining up anymore. Like I'm someone who dives into fucking dynasty and goes deep, and I didn't know half the players that were running routes for them, right? They have the bust and J.J. Arcega Whiteside. They, Greg Ward was like their one by the end of the year. You have Deshaun Jackson, who's at this point, he's nothing more than an old specialist who can't stay on the so field. Hurt hamstring, yeah. Best case it? scenario, yeah. He's an shot. old an old fuck specialist. Deshaun Jackson. Seriously, fuck him for the rest of his life. And yeah, sure. Whatever. Alshon Sorry. Jeffrey. Alshon Jeffrey <laughs> is like in that same category where he actually shown flashes, but he hasn't been able to stay on the field and he's not getting any fucking younger. So this entire receiving group is fucked. And Jeff Jefferson, Jeff, Justin Jefferson comes in there and fucking hits them with a little bit of life in the veins here. Jefferson's a big, tall, lanky, but super productive. 6'1, 202. So good size. Four four three forty yard dash. So this dude can fucking fly, Fast. and he plays. He plays uh, a a large majority of his routes came from the slot last year, which is cool because you like to see these NFL receivers who have a lot of size that play the slot because that's how you have guys like Michael Thomas getting open and making. You know, that's how you have a guy like Michael Thomas catching one hundred and forty balls because mm-hmm. he's running a lot of short routes. He's a PPR absolute monster. Jefferson coming in there. First round draft capital. I mean, we've seen what the Eagles have done with their slot receivers, like guys like Jordan Matthews. Like they could put up numbers there. And being uh, one of Carson Wentz's probably favorite targets coming into an offense right now that is so void of talent. Man, I love Jefferson. So he was dominant at LSU. Um, caught 111 balls, I believe, which was tied for the NCAA lead. But you look at the athletics now that we have his combine numbers. I thought Jefferson was going to come out at the combine and run like a four five five or like a four six zero or something, just given his size. But no, the kid fucking absolutely blasts it away, and uh, just, everything just lines up for him to be a monster producer in the NFL, especially if he's going to the Eagles. My one question for you is, obviously part of this is due to landing spot because he went to the Eagles. Yeah. If he didn't go to the Eagles there and say that was Denzel Mims who went to the Eagles, would yeah, you it would be, be changing Mims. your pick? Yeah. yeah. yeah I, okay. I wanted so bad to take Mims earlier. but Yeah, he, I just hated where, we, where he went. Every mock I've seen, I've seen Mims at Green Bay, and I think it's, it's a mouth-watering situation too. So yeah. I, I think what, whoever made this mock draft, it might have been maybe like a week or two ago before we've had some updated uh, – actually, no, it was updated as of – No, April it was updated before, today. As of today. Yesterday. So this guy needs well, to get on fucking, fucking shit. Yeah cunt all right um yeah but i i realistically like anyone who landed in philly would have been had a huge bump up my board uh, yeah like, i was, was just curious like if jerry was, like, Judy one of those was, three guys yeah 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 i think they're they're relatively in a tier together like the uh once you get past cd then i, I almost have it like cd in a, in a tier by himself then judy in a tier by himself and then kind of like the uh the rager jefferson mims uh that kind of group together but obviously that's going to work itself out 
once we get draft position. So that's how I'll, I'll break the tie. But the Eagles are just like, you don't go, you don't go into a situation too often where you have a quarterback who is definitely way more than competent and at, at the very best of his game can be an elite passer and can provide really good fantasy stats, but also be void of talent. Right. So it's like, mm-hmm. it, it's a, it's a perfect wave of things. The ceiling of Justin Jefferson is, is very, very high. So I like, I like that ceiling is the <laughs> showing right now, the roof, baby. <laughs> The ceiling is the roof. <laughs> so Jefferson, 108, run it, write it down, take it to the bank. All right, bitches, 109, Henry Ruggs with the 49ers at the 13th overall pick. As we all know, Henry Ruggs clearly the fastest player in the draft and speed kills, and everyone loves speed in the NFL now, especially all these offensive coordinators and coaches. And with a guy like Kyle Shanahan, you just know that he's going to use him the right way. So, like, with Ruggs, he's, I think he's so dependent on where he goes, whereas the coaches need to, need to use him in, a right, in the right way. He's not going to – you can't just have him out there. He's not a, a great route runner. He has a few routes. He runs those routes very well, but he's burners. He's all speed. His floor – Is that how you feel about, Is that how you guys feel about him? Let me ask you your opinions on Ruggs because it seems like Twitter is, is split on him. You either love him and think he has like a wide receiver one ceiling or people are like he's just a burner. He didn't produce at Alabama. Like where do you guys want him I as think a prospect? There's two, I think there's two ways to look at him or two ways I've seen him. I've seen people talk about him as the next Tyreek Hill and then I've seen people talk about him as the next Darius Haywood Bray who is both speedy guys and one's an absolute elite superstar and the other was pedestrian at best. What's your I, opinion on that as I a football player? More towards Darius Haywood Bay. I think uh, Ruggs is a, a, a lot better of a football player. I think he's actually yeah. like, really got something. I didn't say he was a bad football player. I just don't think he's the Tyree Kill. There's, there's I, no way. No. I don't think he's that breakout no, superstar kind of guy. I don't think you're ever going to have another Tyree Kill because you'd have to have another Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. That's like the problem there. But he's so, going to Kyle Shanahan, so fair. So that's like one of the next best things, which is why I'm I still think very the landing confident. spot is very predetermined of what he exactly what he does. And like it's, you it's, said a Kyle Shanahan innovative offense getting anybody open getting the ball into his best player's hands then yes that's a great spot and, and I would you have more, a, towards, more towards that way as opposed to that way a run game that is very very good in San Francisco so that's going to help open up those long play actions those shots down the field and you have a competent quarterback as much as I don't really like Jimmy G he's not a bad quarterback like, job, he though. can he can throw the ball to you know he's fine so, like you it's know not what? like he's going somewhere like with Josh Allen where I'm like, fuck, is he going to ever be yeah. able to hit him around the field? This is a perfect landing spot for him. Kyle Shanahan's first year in San Fran, 2017. You remember Marquise Goodwin? I just, I, well, Yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah, but Marquise, how many drops did he have? I'm making a point for you. He went over 1,000 oh, okay. yards that year. Marquise oh, Goodwin went over 1,000 yards in 2017. And he's dirt. And he's dirt. If Ruggs yeah. can take that role, I'm sure Kyle Shanahan's got a thought like that where he's uh-huh. like – we could Henry Ruggs is a much better good player than Marquise Goodwin, right? Uh-huh. So well, I like Mar- Ruggs landing there. It, it will make for an interesting offense, though. It will make it really difficult to project fantasy wise because then it's like Kittle's so good, he's got to get his. Debo's so good, he's got to get his. Ruggs is so fucking fast, he's got to get a lot his. of mouths to feed. You know, but he's it's like, like a, he's a home run guy. So like he, I, I feel like he's a he's almost going to be. He has that potential to be that next Deshaun Jackson type where he's going to either get you like 18. So you like, so you would like draft that, You would draft him though there because like you like having a guy like that on your fantasy team. Cause it's really hard I mean, to decide yeah, when it's a start. home run. So just like, being a home run hitter. I, it doesn't entice me entirely. I'd probably rather more consistent because if you're just a home run hitter, like a Deshaun Jackson, you'll have a Deshaun Jackson put up 27 points in one game. And then he'll have two the next, but I think so Ruggs, obviously it depends I think Ruggs on your is similar team. To, I think Ruggs is similar to Deshaun Jackson in the sense that J- Jackson at his prime was more than just a burner. Like, he, he operated when he needed to be as, like, a good possession receiver as well, right? Like, I don't think we can understate that. And I think Ruggs has that potential to do that too. Like, when you – I know it's a limited sample size and he was ne- – there were games where he disappeared and shit. But, like, he, he has the potential to be a true possession receiver as well and, and make plays outside. Big hands. Yeah, yeah, and make plays outside of just catching the ball fucking 92 yards down the field. So, uh, Ruggs to San Fran, yeah, I like this pick a lot here. A lot of it for me was just where he landed, like with Kyle yeah. Shanahan on that team. It's a great team, good old line, quarterback, weapons. Like it just it all adds up. And do you like, like you know him if he goes through, to a Jacksonville? No, no, absolutely not. Right. I uh, hope Jacksonville I, doesn't draft like a high caliber receiver. I know if they take like Judy ever. Lamb or, or but you know it's one of those things too. Like we all hated AJ Brown to the Titans, and then look how that turned out. So you don't right. know. Wait, yeah, Animal, let me ask you a few questions here because I'm seeing so many mocks where Denver is taking one of either CeeDee Lamb yes. or Henry Ruggs. What's your take on that? 
Like, would you be disappointed if they took either one of those two? Or would do you prefer one of the, I'm assuming you prefer CD, but like that makes the, uh, the dynamic weird between CD and Sutton, I feel like. Yeah. So for me, I'm 100% an offensive tackle guy. I always want us to draft an offensive lineman. But even if, if they have five have starting to, quality yeah, offensive exactly. linemen, drafting I always want an offensive lineman in the first round. Doesn't matter. But in this situation where it looks like that we're going to be taking a skilled player, most likely a wide receiver, to get someone for Drew Locke opposite of Cortland Sun, I would. I'd think I would still rather have CD Lamb. You got to go CD. Complete, like you just take the better player. More of a complete guy. Yeah. yeah. Like, don't like worry CD about who's going to be the X and the Y well, and all that CD bullshit. Just definitely pick the better people, guy. I, I think the compliment to Sutton would be better. Uh, you're right. Would you be? Would like you? you, go, you go best, I, I think go best people player. think about that too much, though. Yeah, like, it, oh, it, it compliments it them. Yeah. It's like just yeah. get the best player on the fucking field. Like, what happens if Sutton gets hurt for six weeks and now he's out there by himself? Like you need. I'd rather have CD. Like you know. Would you be disappointed though? Two elite wide receivers. No. Would you be disappointed if you took if you took rugs? No, I wouldn't be disappointed. I definitely. It's just one of those things where I'm going to be very nervous going to the season. Like, is Shermer going to fucking use this guy the right way? Like, he had digs. He knew how to throw the ball. Like, you know, we'll okay. see. I don't know. All right. Well, you're about to take a, a 180-degree turn here. You're at the 110. Oh, yeah, so you, that's right. You got another pick. again. Yeah, 110. The Chiefs, with the 96th pick overall, took Eno Benjamin. And this is one that, like, as soon as I saw it, I knew right away I have to take him because of, like we said, landing spot with the Chiefs. Like, that – we talked about if the Chiefs take a running back, like whoever that guy is, I fucking want him. He's got to be in the care. top three rounds, and Benjamin yes. fit that criteria. Yes, this was the was this the last pick, of the third round, or like the fifth, ninety six. Uh, there's like supplemental picks, so they have like a couple, yeah. like ten more after this or something. But basically, basically, one of the last picks. But here's the thing that I love with Eno Benjamin is the receiving numbers that he had in college and that he would put up in Andy's system. Would I think just would, would be absolutely ridiculous. And you have a guy like Damian Williams who's there now who, like, you don't have to worry about him. He only plays in the playoffs. So during the season with the fantasy and everything going on, you have, you know, Benjamin. He's not a bell cow. He's not going to be the guy getting every single carry. But in the Kansas City Chiefs system, it doesn't matter. You don't need to be the bell cow running back. Between Damian Williams, Shady McCoy, and Darwin Thompson last year, 30, 60, 70, it's like 84 targets right there just for the running backs. And you're talking about Patrick Mahomes missing games, just so many other factors that it's, it's really just the Chiefs. You're talking about the, the burst and the agility that this guy has in the open space with Patrick Mahomes being able to scramble and always create extra time and never get sacked and just dump the ball off to whoever's open. This guy's open right there. and It's, it's the match. I, I want to I I dive into Eno a little bit more because this is a guy that yeah, I feel like do. a lot of people really liked. And then he had somewhat of a bad season last year, a, a pretty inefficient season. And then everyone kind of like withdrew from him and they're not fans of him anymore. And I feel like he's getting to the point where he's going to be a great value in drafts. I mean, if yeah. he goes to the Chiefs, like fucking forget about it. But mm -hmm. he came away from the combine winner. I didn't know if he was going to uh, come in over – uh, 200 pounds. He weighed 207, which is like yeah. one or two pounds less than J.K. Dobbins. So you want to talk about workhorse size. This guy carried the ball over fucking 300 times his sophomore year. He had 300 carries his sophomore year, along with 35 receptions. The following year, he had another 295 touches. So he's shown that he could hold up over a monster workload. He almost he had over 1,900 yards from scrimmage and 18 touchdowns in his sophomore year. And yes, like his efficiency drip, uh, dipped down a little bit, but he played at Arizona State. Their line was not good, but he overcame that, put up numbers. And when I look at Eno, man, I think, I don't know if his ceiling is necessarily Aaron Jones, but if you, if you compare the player they are in terms of size, in terms of speed, in terms of their the, burst scores. The, the burst and the agility. Are burst, like agility, uh, the fucking target share. Like everything is so so close when it when you look at the numbers and the production that Eno put up in college tells me that he's capable of doing so so I think Eno's floor and ceiling especially in the Chiefs offense is going to be way higher than people predict even if you don't like him as a player I think you should go back and revisit that shit because I did a very long write-up about him the more I dove into him the more I liked him as a prospect regardless of if he's getting drafted by KC in the, in the top three rounds so if you want the full write-up you can get that at the uh, on the draft guide which is available big dog draft guide Dot com. But yeah, I like, I like, uh, you know, at 110, you got to love him if he goes to KC. Yeah, that was the, the, the biggest point for me was Kansas City. Like, if Zach Moss went here and like he was at Kansas like I would have taken him there. Like, whoever the Kansas City Chiefs took a running yeah, back. Yeah, it's, it's just such rounds. an ideal offensive system built for, for running back like that. So you can't, you yeah. can't go wrong. Nice yes, sir. It's a nice pick. Um, Unorthodox. Right, who's out of the box? Who's with, fucking? With my, with my last pick of the first round. 
I took Denzel Mims, wide receiver out of Baylor. He went to Baltimore at the 57th pick, so in the second round. And I expect Denzel Mims to operate as as basically what they wanted Miles Boykin to be. Because Denzel Mims is actually a good version of Miles Boykin. He's big, he's fast, he's strong, he's fucking. Are you done on him? My what? Boykin? Are you done on Boykin? If they take Mims, fuck yeah, I'm done on Boykin. Wait, Boykin's yeah. still in the NFL? I I like like him going into this year, but all right. Oh, nice. Miles, for day. I'm out. Miles Boykin. I'm out. For another, that's for another day. What did he Save do that. last year that would make you even like him whatsoever? That's the Nothing. door. I'm it's out. It's just that I think that there's no one else there. I think you're going to see him take another uh, a little step this year into the another into step. Roles. He didn't. He was still crawling on the floor. He didn't take any steps. He never year. really got the reps last year, man. They had. So what makes you think? So, so what? What about that makes you think that it, that was a good thing? I don't think they're going to change much we'll philosophy reps. wise. Why? Why would it? I'm just saying. Okay. Well, you're just saying things with no fucking reason or rhyme to him, especially when we take Denzel Mims here. Denzel Mims, see, see the funny part about that is, like I say, he's going to be what Miles Boykin it should be. And before the NFL Combine happened and before everyone really actually liked Denzel Mims, on Bunk Bad Breakdowns, I basically, T. Higgins was like the wide receiver three or four before the Combine happened. Everyone loved him coming out of Clemson. I watched tape of Higgins. I watched tape of Denzel Mims. And I remember like the first thing I said when we got on camera, I was like, this is going to be a hot ass take right now. But Denzel Mims is going to be what everyone thinks T. Higgins is going to be, right? And then the combine happened, and then those two rankings flipped really quickly because Denzel Mims absolutely blew. Guy's 6'3", 207. Big receiver, 4'3", 8. A 4'3". Three three Thomas, baby. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. It. Next to Marius. He, yeah, he, I mean, he's a fucking burner, and he broke Better out. Hands. He broke out under 20 years old, college dominator in the 86th percentile. Big playmaker, can do it on the outside, can do it on the inside. Him going to Baltimore – it's not ideal from a volume perspective, but listen, you put Denzel into this offense where the targets are going to be pretty fucking funneled between Mark Andrews himself and Hollywood if he could stay on the field. And I, I think a lot of production and efficiency will come out of that offense. I mean, Mar Jackson, not a great passer, but still the fucking MVP of the league. All right. So I'm going to give him a little bit of credit. I'm going to give him leeway when it comes to the passing. And you, you see the jump that Lamar Jackson took from year one to year two. What's to say he doesn't take not an, exactly. I can't take another? I don't think he's going to take a jump from that. Listen, not not no, that I, jump. I, I'm done hating on as a player. It tells you. It tells you. It tells you that. It tells you that he he put in enough work from year one to year two to make that improvement. That he's a hard worker. That he'll put the work in to to continue to grow as a player. You know what I mean? So that's where that's the way I'm looking at it. It's just a good situation. A great offense. They led the the NFL in points per game. They do rush the ball a lot, obviously. But like Denzel Mims, a player that I love. Lamar Jackson's a great quarterback. This offense is great. I love Harbaugh as a coach. I think he knows how to use his players in the right yeah. way. And uh, there's not much more to say. Dra round two capital, I'm all in on, on Denzel Mims as a prospect. Yeah, that was a nice pick. And I'm uh, pretty upset that you took him from me at uh, where I'm taking 112. And I took, uh, I took T, T. Higgins at going to the Saints. Maybe not my, my most favorite pick, but I, I'm, I'm a big T. Higgins fan. And I'm a believer in that Saints – system breeze is done after this year we know that uh this is Taysom hill their quarterback of the future do they maybe do they draft one this year we don't we don't can't know that's him what's that you can't be Taysom. no i no, can't be no. i there's there's no way he's not a franchise court come on let's go i i'm a big Taysom Taysom hill fan and watching what he did in like the second half against the vikings in the in the playoff game was was special but he's not <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean it was awesome but he's not he's uh, not a franchise they're like way too competent of a franchise to believe that he's going to be their guy right on. exactly yeah. and they're way too competent sean payton i in my opinion sean payton is way too competent of an offensive coach to have him as the starting quarterback and i think he's way too competent of an offensive coach not to get t higgins involved in every aspect of the way we saw he's 6'4 215 he's a big boy he's a big boy his athleticism, you watched him on tape, you watched him, his highlights, he just dominated his competition. Now, does it help he played in the ACC? Yes. Does it help that he had the best college quarterback, maybe since Andrew Luck? Yes. It all helped. But still showing it, you can't deny the talent factor and what he has. Uh, Nick, I think in your, in, your, in your guide, you compared him to Alshon Jeffrey. Which, oh, yeah, Mike did, Mike did the write-up. That was his my, player. My, okay, yeah. Mike compared him to Alshon Jeffrey, which I think it's pretty damn solid comparison. And Alshon Jeffrey, when he was young and healthy, he was no bum whatsoever. Mm -hmm. He was top 10 wide first, receiver. Top 10 wide receiver when he was yeah. on the field. He was getting balls thrown in by Jay Cutler. So if they, if they have any sort of semblance of decent quarterback play come in, opposite of Michael Thomas, who's going to command everything and Kamara out of the backfield, I think he's going to have the opportunity to have those one-on-one matchups and use his athleticism to just body defenders and make big plays. So 
I'm going to take him here at 112 in the sense I love the system. I, I love Sean Payton. And I, I first love round capital, player. first round capital, man. I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to take him. I was held off. I was thinking about taking one of these quarterbacks, but in a one quarterback league that we're doing right now in a mock, I said no. And um, CEH is going to Cleveland, so or Cincinnati, so there's no point in taking him. Um, I just thought my bang for my buck in the system where he was going as a believer, as opposite to the best receiver in football, I'm going to take the upside there. T. Higgins, 112 from New Orleans. Yeah, I mean, like, like I said, he was post pre combine, he was in everybody's like top five, if not top three, uh, yeah. why wide receiver why prospects. He didn't do anything in the combine, it was kind of, yeah, he, I mean, disappointing and. Um, and then he dropped and now we don't really know if he's going to go in the first round anymore or if he's going to drop to the late second round. So that will obviously right. play a role, but we know the saints have been trying year over year to, to give someone outside of Michael Thomas a run, right? Like the Ted Ginns and the fucking, um, Trey Quan Smith, Trey Trey Quan. Yeah. yeah. They've been trying to do it. They can't do it with, with, uh, with, with T Higgins. I have no problem here. If he, if he ends up going, you know, first round 24 overall and you're getting him at one twelve. That's beautiful. You got to take it. Yeah. My problem was that like people wanted to start taking him at like the 105. And I'm like, the, the problem I have with that is when you're drafting earlier on in these rookie drafts, like you should be drafting guys that have really high ceilings. And, you know, Alshon, I think is probably peak what we would see out of him. I think uh, he reminds me a lot of a player that also came out of Clemson, Mike Williams. I think he's like a big jump ball guy, score touchdown, red zone, but he's he'll probably, body it. Yeah. Yeah, he'll, he'll hover around that like 60 reception mark, 65 reception mark. And that's about the peak. But when you're right. looking at the guys like like Judy or fucking Rager who, you know, you're, you're targeting earlier on in rookie drafts, like those guys have, you know, 80, 90, 100 catch upside seasons. And those are the guys I'm targeting. But, I mean, first round capital on the fucking Saints with Drew Brees and uh, at the 112, I, I really like that value. That's I think I, that, that's exactly why I went for it. And like I said in the beginning, it's probably not, you know, maybe my favorite pick in the world, but he's going to a spot where I think he can absolutely succeed in playing alongside of a Michael Thomas. If he went somewhere else, then – I'm probably not taking him there, but where he went, all things aside, I'm pretty happy getting him in 112. Yeah, I like that. All right. Yeah, well, T. Higgins. <coughs> <let's>, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Annie. <laughs> Anime animal. You need a timeout, T.O.? Oh, no, no, that's a T. T. Higgins. Oh, no timeout. We call him Titty T? Boy T. Higgins. That's his name. T. Titty Boy T. All right, so we play in Superflex Leagues. Let's talk about the quarterbacks real quick. And there was a surprise in this mock draft uh, because we have Joe Burrow going at the yeah. one. We had Joe Burr going at the one. We had Miami taking Justin Herbert at five. Over Tua. And L.A. taking Tua at six. So, so things get interesting there. And listen, bro, like we never – people are so fucking bad at, at predicting like how the NFL draft is actually going to work. So everything that we, that we think we know is that it's going to be Burrow, then Tua very shortly after, and then Herbert probably at like six to L.A. or you know somewhere yeah. in that range or something. I don't think so, he falls below six. So that's not what happened. But Joe Burrow goes one. Let me ask you guys, the large majority of people think that super flex leagues, you take the quarterback the 101. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that's the case all the time. I don't think that's the case this year either. It's team dependent, obviously. Here's the thing. Here's, here's the way I look at it, right? Like, okay, so Jonathan Taylor becomes the workhorse in Indy, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe his startup value this year is like a late second or a third round pick, right? But once Marlon Mack is out of there, Where's Jonathan Taylor going to be going in startup drafts? He's going to be like a top Late seven round. overall pick. Yeah, you know what I mean? First round. And so where, mm-hmm. where are guys like Joe Burrow going to be drafted in startup leagues? Probably late first round, early second round. So I look it at is. it like use it practically where you're going to be drafting these guys. And just because it's super flex doesn't mean that Joe Burrow has to go over a workhorse running back. Right. Now, in this case particularly, like because maybe Jonathan Taylor didn't get into the first round, maybe I wouldn't take uh, him over a quarterback, and it will depend on the landing situation. But I'm with you. Like I don't, I don't think it's necessary. You don't have to go with the quarterback, Joe Burrow, and then J- uh, Tua, and then Justin Herbert, and then the running backs. Like mm-hmm. Running backs are fucking very valuable in fantasy football. Like Why, why, why does it need to be the quarterback there? And so, especially in dynasty with those rookie running backs on those rookie contracts, and they're probably going to get the workload for those five years right off the rip. So Joe Burrow goes one. That's it's got to be team dependent because like for me like right now my dynasty team I have Kirk Cousins, Sam Darnold, and Dak Prescott. I wouldn't take Joe Burrow there. I'd definitely take the running back. But if yeah. you only have like Nick, who do you have on your your quarterbacks? Your quarterbacks I are have, tough right now. I have Russell Wilson, uh, Cam, Cam, and Fitzpatrick and Jacoby. Yeah. So I'm I'm like I need Cam to be healthy this year. I need Cam to yeah. be signed by a team and be healthy. 
Otherwise, you I'm have the one on one in that draft today. Who do you take? You take um, Burrow. Do you need a quarterback? Do you do it? If I if I were looking at this draft right now, this mock draft, I would take a quarterback. Yeah, because I yeah. need someone opposite of Russell Wilson. But team dependent. Uh, yeah, it is going to be Definitely. team dependent. Um, I think if you're starting it overall, though, if you're just starting from a clean slate, I might look for one of the running backs. But I, Joe Burrow I, would be. I would lean that way this year so then say this happens where do you still take justin herbert because i think most people will probably side on the on the fact that he's probably not as talented as as burrow or tua so the fact that he is a top five quarterback pick overall i mean you have to be drafting him early in super flex leagues because he's going to get shots year over year over year over year and give you a floor as a super flex starter for your roster right so like where would you throw Justin Herbert in if he does go to five overall to Miami? Where are you throwing him in that first round of Superflex? I mean, you got to go He's mid late, late first. first, right? I am not yeah. I, from the off the rip, just off the. I don't. I'm not a Justin Herbert fan. Just me personally, I think he's a pussy. But that has <laughs> nothing to do with with fantasy value, like you said. Superflex league, he's going to get shot after shot after shot, especially in Miami or if he goes to San Diego. Like they're they're a rebuilding franchise. So every piece they pick, which is why I like DeAndre Swift here too, because they're like, if they're investing a first round pick, they're looking at him as like a key piece of their entire rebuild over the next five years, you know? Right. And that's why I'm, you know, taking a shot with Justin Herbert. And you're not not even taking a shot. You have to confidently take him where? In the top six, top seven? Well, based on our our draft, if you're looking at it right now, like where are you throwing him into? Like after which player? See, that's the thing. Like, with our draft, I probably – I don't think he's a first-round pick in Superflex. I think oh, he's whoa, an whoa, early whoa, second. He is. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He is. He's, yeah, he's really? definitely first round. Definitely if he's first a top-five pick, pick definitely in Superflex. If he's a top-five pick in the NFL draft, yeah, he's first round. He'd I, probably go – I think some people would make the case that he can go – I, I would rather have six? Justin Jefferson than him. No. No. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it, Adam. No. Really? You – Dude, I, I think he Herbert's has to a be, minimum 14, 15 a game, no matter what. You, you he's just a quarterback you, for you for the next five years. Right. But like, it, it, like I, I, it's hard to talk about this because you got like super flex leagues. You're assuming everyone already has quarterbacks. So like, you're not assuming well, just, that. Just don't, don't worry about who's on whose team. You, you got to figure, first of all, even if you have three quarterbacks. The earliest not- I would probably take him in this situation would be right before Cam Akers. So I think at the one of like Taylor Swift, CeeDee Lamb, Dobbins, probably so Herbert. But Burrow like would be yeah, Burrow would be yeah. top. So what quarterbacks are you going to be starting Justin Herbert over? Like that you have all of mine team? right now. If I don't, if Cam's not healthy, I would but be that, starting that, Herbert. That's, yes, that's like not the, an issue. Like that to me, that's not an issue. For you, I feel like he's a guy that fits only like three teams in every league. He's not a guy, you know but if he, he's the he's going to be a starter for the Chargers for the next five years. That's the and thing. if he and if he impl- if he explodes and he's one of the best quarterbacks in football, it doesn't yeah, matter what trade your others. I get it. I'm just saying. Then you have capital to trade to get more picks, whatever you want to do. So we're, we're probably six, right, in this draft? Six, seven? We're, we're yeah. I, I would still take Tua over – I would definitely take Tua over Herbert here, even though he went behind him. Like, go. Jump in, no, baby. No, I, I was just going to say um, – The situation is ridiculous, the weapons that you yeah. have there. Yes. Eckler, um, Henry, Williams, Keenan yeah. Allen. He goes into the best situation of all these rookies. I might even take him over Joe Burrow, to be it's honest with you. It's 20 times better than what it would have been in Miami. Yeah. And that's no knock on Preston Williams and – and Devontae Parker and, and everybody. But I think if he went to, if he went to Los Angeles Tua, that's, I mean, that's gold. That's a gold mine. Yeah. So in, you, in have, my position, you have to consider, you have to consider him over Burrow. And I like Burrow's situation. I think it's an underrated Cincinnati yeah, situation. For sure. I think, uh, yeah. If I'm in the go fade me where I need a quarterback opposite of Russ, I think I might go to a one-on-one Joe Burrow one-on-two and then yeah. let the running backs kind of rip off the board. And I, I would, no, I wouldn't Herbert's be just not a guy I love. Point. Sorry, yeah, I, I wouldn't be mad flipping a coin at that at that point. Anti Tua, I don't want him. Not on my board. <laughs> Anti Tua. I don't Adam, like lefty at, quarterbacks. You're right. <laughs> it's a stupid bias. I will admit it right away. It's not like a realistic thing to like. I can't be like, oh, like lefty. I just don't you like lefty just, quarterbacks. I don't trust lefty quarterbacks. What about other than wait, Steve so, Young? The lefty dude. running quarterbacks you don't like. So Steve Young, Michael Vick, like all the running lefty quarterbacks, we're just out on. I just don't like lefty quarterbacks. Now, obviously, obviously, Tua comes with a massive, massive durability issue. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a big concern. From what we know, he's he going to come in. You, you I pray that Tua goes to the Chargers every night so you, that the Broncos can crush him two times a year. Okay. Well, for the next I, three years because right, then he'll be right. out of the league. Okay. I, I, think, I think he's going to be better in Drew Locke. But you can't draft him fear. So – if everything checks out and Tua goes top five, That's then I'm hard. taking him QB needy. I'm taking one or two. I might take him one. Like you said, if he goes to if he goes to San Diego, I, I might take him one. Yeah, I would. Uh, it's definitely a conversation to be had. But again, it will it will depend on your uh, 
your team situation where yeah. I'm quarterback needy, I'm probably going to grab one of those quarterbacks. If I'm not, I think the main point here is like you don't need to fucking take a quarterback at 101 or 102, 102 if no. your team doesn't need those guys. Yes, they would be good trade capital further down the line, but definitely is not a, a, a necessary thing. But if your team needs a quarterback and you're in a super flex league, you, you fucking take them. You take him because he is safe. He'll give you a floor you, for a long time. You line time. up. You line animal, up. You, animal, you take Justin Herbert one overall. <laughs> you get on the clock this year. You take Herbert. All right? Wait, also. Justin Herbert. There was another quarterback in the first round. I don't know if you guys saw this in the mock draft. There was, was another first round quarterback. I, I it was Jordan Love. That. It was Jordan Love to the New England Patriots. Yeah, I literally liked him. I would rather have fucking Jordan Love of the Patriots over to it in Chargers. You're a f- say it. That's say crazy. it. Say it. You're a fucking say what fool. you want to say. <laughs> You're a fucking moron. Jalen Hurts to the Detroit Lions. Fucking love that. Wherever he goes, I'm going to be drafting him. I don't care what round. He I is. want to draft him. Late. I, I actually think I Jalen Hurts is probably going to be a starter right. at some point in the NFL. I think Hurts is going to get like, like second round draft what? capital, if not late first round draft capital, and he's going to shoot up super flex draft boards. It's going to be insane. Go fade me. I might take him second round two six. I might take him. He won't draw. He won't drop to you. Yeah, he will. No. Yeah, well, depending on where he gets drafted. Well, it's only Scott and Sexy Pass in the first round. Yeah, but Scott listens to too much of what, like, oh, Scott listens the, to everything. The, yeah, too much of the shit that we put out, so he'll know. He'll know we're talking about Jalen Hurts all day. Scott, too just much? know I have, I have everything. I have your son and I have your wife and I have them all locked up. You text me and I have a trade offer for you. If you want to see him again, you text me. Damn. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. I don't think that's Heavy real. Stuff. While he's editing this, I'm sh- they're probably like, <laughs> he's like, literally hey, on honey? the couch next to them. <laughs> yeah. And how right. has he not changed the name up? of his kid yet? To what? Not oh, Max. <laughs> Imagine he changed it to Animal. Although Max might. That'd Max, be awesome. I'm not kidding when I say this, and I'm sorry. Scott, please keep this in so everybody knows. Scott, our editor, the greatest editor on earth, might have the cutest kid in America. I love when he sends us the big dog. He pics. is pics like undiably. I don't know how beautiful Scott's wife is, but holy shit. That is the cutest kid I've ever I'll show seen. you a picture. Just go on Google and type in Derek Henry wife. <laughs> 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 all right. That's all we got today for Fade the Public. Any parting words, Animal? You've been so uh, so wisdomful today. I just want to say Snacks is a bitch for cutting me off that first time I tried to go. <laughs> it was a good I'm point so I was making. about that. Other than that, I had a great time today. <laughs> I did too. Overall, today- really, really fun day. Today was fun. That's how we're going to wrap up the episode. Everybody out there, stay safe. Stay away from people. We are socially isolated. You guys see that Instagram post that uh, Usain Bolt put up? Yeah, it was really uh, great. It was great. He put up a, a oh, you picture. sons of bitches. I didn't know we were all putting our masks on. Mine's in my car. It doesn't matter. Why the fuck's animal? Because when I go out, I put it on. You don't wear it around your house? No, we're not allowed in the grocery store without it. You saying yeah. Bolt put up an Instagram post. It was like a picture of him at the finish line of him just dominating race and everyone else is like eight feet behind him. And he put social like, distance. Yeah, him social distance. Yeah, it was fucking yeah, son of a bitch. monster Classic. flex. All right, Classic. that's all we got for Fade the Public this week. I hope you all enjoy. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Drop a comment about what you liked. Make sure you're following us on the Twitter, BigDollarsDraftGuy.com. Do everything I just fucking said, and I will love you forever. You will be forever be in our debt. Animal, stop doing that. We got to get off the air before you start doing real weird shit. Yeah, that, 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 uh, that draft guy is literally unbelievable, by the way. <laughs> Do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah, All that right. draft guy is sick. Thanks.